This week on Life on Jupiter, we discuss trip lines and lift bridges, and we finally make it to the end of the Erie Canal. <laughs> At the end of a long day on the helm, we are once again looking for somewhere safe to anchor Jupiter for the night. Earlier in the day, I'd spent some time going through the charts and Google Earth, searching for likely spots where we could drop the anchor. Wide parts of the river, river bends, somewhere outside the channel. I would pick two or three options in case the first ones were no good. With night approaching, it was high time that we decided upon one of these spots. A place wide enough that we could swing if there was any weather change. A place out of the way and somewhere safe for the night. So, the idea of a trip line is a separate line attached to the that end of your anchor and Rockner have supplied a hole just for that purpose. There's also a hole here on the shank, but I'd imagine this hole is a better one. So if your anchor gets caught under a log or some obstruction here, normally you're pulling the anchor out that way or even trying to break it up vertically that way. And if it was caught, like we got caught in Nassau, under power lines, <laughs> underwater power lines, cables, under here. And I had to go scuba diving and remove it, you know. But if we had a trip line, the theory is we can pull the anchor out from under the obstruction. So how do we get a hold of this line? Well, it's attached to a float, which sits on the surface, gives you access to the line. I have a weight, just a scuba diving weight belt weight, which would always remain taut and the, the boy would be bob would be up and down like this you would have to put slack on the main chain maneuver the boat so that you can pick up the trip line and once you've got the trip line you can then attach another line to this now this is dyneema so it's uh, really going to take some tension before it breaks but you can maybe tie a figure eight attach another line through it and then start winching or using the boat to back backwards to pull the anchor out from the under the obstruction that's the idea of a trip line now obviously all this dangly stuff can cause a tangle problem and it does <laughs> so it takes a little bit of experimentation with technique on how to deploy the trip line and the float and how to retrieve it without tangling it obviously the retrieval part is okay but deploying it without it getting wrapped around the anchor has been a bit of a challenge but just experiment with it what we've found most successful is we drop the anchor down first we are moving backwards you know a knot or so so that the anchor streams out lays out the cable behind it and then this dyneme is about eight meters long it uh, we then deploy the float so that the float and hopefully the cable the the line stay on top of the anchor and the anchor chain and it doesn't get tangled we do find that it is often tangled <laughs> 
anyway that's what we've been doing on the rivers and uh, haven't needed to use it yet the reason why we started using it is because we lost our Rockner 33 in the Hudson River in New York and we had to cut it away I don't think a trip line would have helped us in that situation because four times a day the tide would change and we would swing around this way and then we'd swing around that way and then we'd swing around this way and it was five knot currents so we actually lost 20 meters of chain plus the anchor about two thousand dollars worth i don't think a trip line would have helped us in that situation but maybe it would anyway i'd hate to lose another one under a log which we could have easily pulled out with a trip line give you an idea of just how fast we are traveling along the Erie Canal. This motoring we're doing five and a half knots which is probably about six statute miles an hour. So we're uh, got a trail right next to us here where there's lots of bikes going past us and even fast joggers go past us. Perhaps we've got a slower jogger coming up right now over my shoulder. So that's about how fast this trip will be. A slow jog. Slower than Forrest Gump, because he was a fast runner. But uh, yeah, I need some patience. So uh, I, we're on the last stretch, the last 96 miles of the Erie Canal before we get to Tonawanda, Buffalo. There's not that many locks to go. A total, we're going to do two more today and two tomorrow, and that's it. And in between, so there's not so many locks, but there, there are lift bridges, which I just Luckily, this is a great little brochure here. Look, you got to get this. I'm not sure. It was just one of the, the, actually the marina gave us this thing. But you can probably download it off the New York State Canal Corporation website. And it's, uh, it's got all the phone numbers for the, all the locks and the bridges. So uh, what's the deal with the lift bridge? So I just rang the first one here at Fair, Fairport. And he explained, similar procedure to the lock, you, you just got to call on channel 13 as you're approaching and then you wait for the green light. He said, because while it's lifting, it may skip a gear and drop bang, straight, straight back into the water. So you want to make sure you got the green light. Uh, and that's it. There's, there's about today and tomorrow, there's probably 15 of these to go through. So. Uh, yeah, we'll be approaching and we'll show you our first one. So it's that second bridge you see there. I, I guess it just lifts up a bit higher. He 
said he'll not. lift it once we get a little closer. And we have to wait for the green light. That's where it's from. That's right, baby. Not many people get that. I heard you on the radio. I knew exactly what it meant. <laughs> well done. After passing Lockport, we noticed a sharp increase in boat traffic. This was the first sign of the end of the Erie Canal. We had made it to Tonawanda, just north of Buffalo and Lake Erie. Sometimes when cruising, everything just falls into place. This was one of those times. We'd stumbled across a rock festival. Awesome.
and just up the road a little bit was one of Mother Nature's teats. Finally, we get a day off. We've mm -hmm. been moving for the last 10 days, like every day, doing 40, 50 miles. Except for one, we stopped because we needed internet, didn't we? Mm -hmm. To upload a video. But now, so we're in Tonawanda. And you can see Jupy. Uh, yeah, you can see it. And he's the biggest boat here. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's waving and taking photos and Everyone's going, oh, cool boat, man. <laughs> so it's sort of weird. You don't see many. There's a sailing boat just over here, but they're yeah, not that big. Not a catamaran. Uh, not here. Yeah, not as big as a cat. Jupy's getting around the world. <laughs> With this amount of people walking past Jupiter, taking photos, asking questions, we thought it was about time that we did a bit of self-promotion for our channel. Sponsor. Well, at least the free t-shirt anyway. And stickers. Check these puppies out. Awesome. So we just came to Buffalo Sign Makers here to get uh, a Life on Jupiter sticker, yeah, and a YouTube sticker. And then when he heard our story, he wanted to give us these freebies. That's so cool. Thank you, Sade. Awesome. And uh, thank you, Alana, for doing the work, printing it out. Thanks, guys. <laughs> But it's rush, 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 because we're going to Niagara Falls. Yay! Right now, waiting for our Uber, or our what Lyft. Is it? Lyft. It's a new one. Mm -hmm. And 20 minutes away, and we're at Niagara Falls, and we're going to go on the boat. Yay! Just for a change. Going to go on a boat. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Niagara Falls, man, yeah. that's like, I don't know, I remember seeing video of that when I was a kid yeah. and going, wow. What an awesome place to see. Yeah, I only see that also on postcards. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I see this. See this. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's where we're going. Look at this. Yeah. Oh god, it's beautiful. Not Princess's strong suit. Oh my god. Wait! Oh! Next to the Come on. This one. I can go here. Thank you. 
Getting wet? <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Well, tell us, you know, we can put you away. <laughs> Woo <-hoo. laughs> Just, Just like sailing. <laughs> That was the small one first. Wow, that's very cool. That it's like a cul-de-sac where it's just 270 degrees of fall. Yeah. So much water. Refreshing. We're all wet. <laughs> Sort of better than I expected actually. <laughs> it's just more ferocious. I mean the falls aren't that high, but it's so much water. So much. Pretty cool. <laughs> oh, that's a nice experience. <laughs> now it's hot. <laughs> a refreshing experience. <laughs> What an experience, and we sure are glad we didn't take any wrong turns on the river as we approached Buffalo.